Alright, I once again, last last time we did a catch up, I had to change my sign mid conversation because we were being rushed, but now I just feel like it's a thing. So, yeah. Uh Eric. Yo. Uh I'll let you handle this. I don't know. <laughs> Man, so I'm thinking of a clever <laughs> sign name. Hey, I don't have a, I don't really have a sign name. You know what the sign name needs to be? Wi Fi for all. Wow. Why, you know, you're absolutely right. And I might spend my whole day. I don't know if I have enough F's for that. Wait, no, I have. I have a, I'm gonna figure this out. No, you Wi-Fi just. Wi-Fi for all. You just need one F and then number four. Oh. You're better. Than, I was gonna sit here like a dummy and spell it. This is why you need a host. <laughs> this is why you need a co-host. This is why you need. That and so this is a catch up. So we're catching y'all up on a conversation that we kind of started yesterday. We were talking about why the heck don't people in this country still have wireless internet in the palm of their hand in some cities and towns in this country, bro? It's 2020. We still like a rack in our brain. What can we do? We ended up talking about like T-Mobile and. How T-Mobile's released a 5G, they just bought Metro, they just bought Sprint, and all that's kind of solidified now. It's only a matter of time for before U.S. Cellular gets bought by Verizon, or... You know why, you know why. Oh, yeah, by the way, this is the Identity Booth, thanks for... Oh, yeah, man, we just, yeah, we just hopped in, like, y'all supposed to know uh, who we are. <laughs> we uh, I think we, uh, I, I don't know when this is going to come out, but we should have more than 180 subscribers. Yeah. Uh, if I've lost a subscriber... I'm blaming it on Eric because he came back and then I lost a subscriber. <laughs> so I'm just going to put it like that. Blame the black we, man. <laughs> we out here trying to get 200 subscribers. So please like, share, subscribe, and uh, all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, you know, I'll tell you. I will tell you why all that shit doesn't work for us in America. You want to know why yeah, that what's shit up? doesn't work for us? Because people, conspiracy theories run wild out here mm -hmm. people honestly and you know i'm not gonna see i'm not an engineer <laughs> I, I can't speak yeah. on that but i'm not gonna you can't tell me you can't sit up here and tell me that you are more concerned about 5g than you are a big mac at mcdonald's bro, bro that's well said my bro like that's a problem see people go out here and pump their gut full of foolishness but are concerned about getting cancer. Bro, you already got cancer, bro. You eat McDonald's every freaking day. You're morbidly obese. And with that being said, it bothers me because like a uh, little stock option, like Nokia is, is part of the people in American Towers are part of people who are going to be spreading the 5G. And I can't make money off of that investment i made yeah. because they are they're they're slow rolling it out because people are setting cell towers on fire. Like conspiracy theories like we just recently came through like right now we're coming off the tail end of the crazy uh nigerian doctor who came out and said you know hydroxychloroquine is curing people of covid and the president our the person who's in charge of the cia fbi and N nsa and he's tweeting her out instead of getting facts from his leading physician uh leading uh virologist in dr fauci like oh, boy, come on bro dr fauci is obviously incompetent you think he's incompetent like, after serving four different administrations he's incompetent mm -hmm. you gotta explain this all right so i mean this dude has flip flop more than john Kerry on this position oh okay uh, if you're gonna call okay i'll wait for your rebuttal <laughs> but you better be able to acknowledge hit the reasoning behind it okay so the cdc first came out and said nah, nobody doesn't nobody really needs a mask it's not going to be effective and so fauci comes out and says people don't need a mask and then the cdc says well maybe people do need a mask and so fauci comes out and says people do need a mask and then i see this fool at the goddamn nationals game Without his mask on, <laughs> I was like, "All right, bro, I'm done with you. Kick rocks." All right, all right. and, and he throws like a freaking bro. <laughs> He's 79 years I, old. Inexcusable, inexcusable. All right, all right. So, uh, context, which is key. We know why 
I, we know why they said it's okay not to wear a mask in the beginning. Because we actually had a shortage. And we were trying to make sure we had enough masks for our healthcare workers. Okay, so I'm, going to, I'm going to disagree with you there. You want to know why? Because I was at Medline at the beginning of this. I was in at Medline, one of the, mm -hmm. it's the largest um, medical supply manufacturers in the country based right out of uh, Hero's hometown. And I was there at the manufacturing facility. They did not have a shortage. The issue was, is they had to put everybody on allocation. The only reason why is because they did, wanted to prevent a shortage from happening from people uh, hoarding and overbuying. But they had, they had billions of masks and they were, they were, and that's just Metline. That's not Cardinal. That's not Howard or Kimberly Clark. That's not McKesson. So there were, Billions upon billions of masks and other people like Centos have masks. Like I've been talking to all these representatives from these different companies, mainly because we're building a, a new facility in my company, a new surgical surgery center. So I talk to these reps quite often. There was absolutely no shortage at all. So that was a, that was a misnomer. The shortage came. OK. And, and, I'll, and this then and leads me to my second point, which is the shortage came as a result because the president didn't want to take out that uh, defense, the defense spending fund, which basically I don't know what the name is, uh, but yeah. basically it required. What's yeah. it called? Uh, so it was the it was a basically a, a, um, a law that was on the book since 1950s is basically like yeah. the, the, the defense manufacturing something something or other like that basically to hear what he was talking about is a law that was in the book from the 50s that allowed the president to make and pass an executive order or basically put a, a a mandatory call on manufacturing facilities to convert and produce medical uh, devices and supplies no and i think it's important that we acknowledge that because he had the power to do it but because he didn't want he didn't want to get a bad rep. He knows a lot of the people who support this president. They make they're in the they're in the billion dollar bracket oh, sure. range. So for him to force these people who are his friends and paying him good money, saying good things about him, he didn't want to do that. His ego got in the way. So uh, so that's where you know you can both be wrong and right on this topic. Was there a shortage? No. Was there an agreement on how we were going to get these masks out? No, there was not. There was no. There was nothing that made it proficient for Americans to do it. So fast forward now, and you also have to realize Fauci looks incompetent, but he is when when compared to who has the best mm -hmm. information between the WHO, CDC, Fauci, and Trump, Fauci is winning. The reason behind that is because Fauci does one thing that the other organizations haven't done yet, which is apologize. He acknowledges his errors. He tells us, when he gave us that little, when he was on uh, testifying to Congress and gave us that tidbit that, yeah, I had to say that because the message between us all were off. That's something we've never experienced before in America, where the I, national- I embrace, I embrace humility and contrition. Mm -hmm. Above all, even though this fool still didn't wear his mask at the Nats game, yeah, I, I can't fight. I can't fight you on that. I I literally can't fight you on it. It's just you like to think that the people who are in charge have some level of understanding that goes beyond our realm of understanding. Like he. He's not wearing a mask because he knows everyone within this bubble has been tested, so we're good. But when that's not the case, it really makes you like nervous. But hey, I think his his throwing game is trash. So oh boy, if <laughs> that was that, that you talk about deplorable. That was that was a deplorable. But, but what about Trump not wanting to throw out that first pitch because he was because he said he's too busy. But the same weekend he said he was too busy, he was taking pictures on his golf course with Brent Farr. You know, you know how annoying it is to see Brent Farr take a picture with that guy. Hey, bro, listen, I don't, I don't care who the president of the United States was, and I'm going to say this: I don't give a <laughs> damn if Hitler was the president. If he invited me to come out, I'm going to see the president. I don't care. I just don't. <sighs> the fact, the fact of the matter is, like, there's a part of me that says, like, I wish I could have won the Super Bowl like during Trump's term, just so I could have that opportunity. But I don't know if I would have this 
mental fortitude that I have now if it wasn't for like some of the things I went through in the beginning when I left the NFL. Yeah. Like identity is is identity really does like grow. Like your identity changes and grows and like yeah. you have the ability to progress past whatever you know. But man, it's it's there's something to be said about like just I dare you, I double dog dare you to go watch any of these first videos I made and tell me that's the same hero you're looking at. Good God! Nah, man, we were on the absolute struggle bus. <laughs> we were in a hot box, sitting elbow to elbow. I would have half my arm out the frame. The audio we, was buns at best. <laughs> we learned so much. Yeah. And it's strange now because, like, we, I mean, we turn these, I literally have templates now. We turn these videos out in a matter of minutes. Like, there's nothing to us now. But, like, it speaks to some of the growth because we're still not where we want to be. And yeah, some of the things, I guess we could, uh, are, can we talk about some of the things that we wanted to do? Yeah. Or do we still want to, uh, no, 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 let's, let's be real. Like, do we want to work it out more? Let's wait till we get to 200 subscribers, and then we'll do a live okay, and talk okay, about okay. it. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. All right. And you can tell I'm excited because yeah. that shit that shit means I get to play and do some more shit. Yeah. But like, there is to stand the test of time. Like in February, February 14th, we would have been here five years. Uh, this YouTube page. Yeah. So Oof, wow. that's longer. That's longer than the Confederacy. Like you feel me? Like who, we out here making history. Winning. <laughs> we we actually win in our battles yeah. but I, i'll say this too like we get so much un, unseen love and i wanted to talk about this because yeah. i had the passing of my grandmother this past week but like and she lived to be like 103 like people yes, like that's she was that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah she was great she was fine but like a lot of people like obviously this year was important because i wanted to go poke her in her forehead because this would have been the time for me, my family. This year was the year that all of us would have been able to go. Like, yeah. it was right before school starts for me. It was, uh, Nafi was situated. Luke was situated. The younger twins were situated. My mom was ready. My dad was going to be in Nigeria. He had no situation. So it was perfect already. And so I was like, yeah, I just get to go there and mess with this lady who fed me and did all these cool things for me growing up. And it didn't happen. And that kind of made me feel empty because it wasn't so much like she died waiting on me. She died and I couldn't get there in time. Yeah. So that made me say like, dang, you know, I wish I had done some. More. But the amount of people like I posted that, you know, I posted a picture of us. The amount of people that responded to that was really jarring to me. The amount of people. And I don't think it was from a negative place. I think it was definitely like heartwarming concern like thing. But there were people who commented on that and liked that picture who hadn't contacted me at all this year. Mm. There were people and and just like I put in the quote, she was in charge of a market that fed hundreds of thousands of people. That market opened up even though she died. So on that day, I also had to publish uh, a podcast. And I said to myself, my grandmother wouldn't would go to work when she was sick. So just because she's gone doesn't mean I'm going to take a break today. Yeah. So I posted it. And by comparison, in one day, that post about my grandmother passing got 150 likes. I, if I can find it, I'll put it up there. Yeah. But that that video that's been up for a week now, I posted here. Only less. I know it's less than 100 views. So it it stands to reason for me that I and once again I know these people aren't cruel. I know they weren't saying yes a downfall. I want to bank on. I want to watch this man. So I know that's not the case. But it stands to reason for me to say, are we doing enough to support the people we follow on social media? It is literally free to like, share, subscribe. Why are we? Why do we find ourselves always fighting this battle? Like I know, you know I'm not you, big on social media, but like I know, I know, it, I know. It, Eric isn't big on social media, but he will. And when he gets online, I just see forty likes or shares from him in that one day because he's just making up for all the time that he hasn't been on social media. And I only like, do that for I, people that I know 
that that will appreciate that I went in and 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 gave them a boost on the algorithm. Like I, I think in those terms. So the mm-hmm. the thing that I'm mo- I'm spend most of my time on would consider a social. Well, it is social media is YouTube. Um, that's my main source of entertainment. I really don't watch TV or the news or anything like that. I get all of my, if I need news, I get it from YouTube and mostly from ironically progressive, uh, media outlets. I only follow one mildly conservative outlet and that's it. So, you know, I go on there whenever I see hero post a video. I mean, I'm, I have post notes on so I can watch it. If I miss it, I go back and I go back and replay it and me and my wife sit and watch it. And we we talk about it. we pause it we talk about it, you know. Sometimes we don't get all the way through the video because we end up having a thirty minute conversation about a point the hero made. But at least we're engaging with the people that matter to us. And you know what's what else is funny? Like I follow another guy, and whenever he goes live, he has three four thousand people on his live. He's got about eighty one thousand subs, and he will stop. He's like, yo, I have three thousand people in here, and I only have three hundred likes. Like that. Let's, I, I'm going to stop until we get the likes up. I need at least, you know, 50%. I need at least 25% of the people in here to like share this video. But he's, I've, I've been following him for two weeks and I've watched this guy gain 5,000 subscribers in two weeks. You know why? It's because he's trending. He does lives and he, he's making the people that he's giving this content to like it and share it. Mm. And then you know why they do it? Because it doesn't cost them anything. He's not saying go in and give me a five dollar super chat. He's just saying hit the like button for the freaking algorithm. Share it. If you're getting something from this, share it with somebody. And that's how he's going to be able to grow his audience. And I think the thing is, people I have been so used to YouTube just being a place where they can come get whatever it is they feel like they want and keep scrolling. People have <laughs> People, YouTube platforms built like a timeline. It's built just like Instagram and Facebook. And people are so used to doing this, this mm. stopping, tapping the button, or looking at it, swiping, swiping, swiping. Oh, okay. I saw I saw butt cheeks. Oh, I saw washboard abs. Oh, I saw whatever else that I'm into. Scroll. I don't even have to hit the button. I think them coming in. Um, and getting on these platforms, they're just, it's just the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. The next thing. thing. It, the, I also don't like doubt it because there's a lot of, especially in our generation now, which is kind of strange because like we're part of the millennial group, but there's a lot of millennials that don't know how to use technology properly. So everyone who has a Gmail account automatically has a YouTube account, but you'll still see like for this video, uh, uh, there's like a I did a money video that's been put into a private uh, investment like group and he's like embedded my video into his program and I got like 4,000 views off of it and I was like that's annoying but I can't even be mad because because of him I got 15 subscribers in a week yeah it took me a month to get that before so like I have to acknowledge these things but I also have to be inherently aware that like our subs- like the people who watch this might just watch this and not know that they could do more for free like i have a tab on my page it's called support is free on my instagram page so if you post something if you're promoting something if you're doing something i'll just share it and put it into that group so if you go to this group on my page you can now see multiple people with services mm. from my community from my friends list who are doing something selling something making something and it's free for you to indulge yourself with it but you know i don't think it's fair for me to just like paint our our group because we have a lot of invisible people who Mm -hmm. really appreciate us like somebody uh wrote something on the page obviously i can't mention names here but uh she talked about how especially during these rough times how important it is to have people like me and you talking about things that matter and standing up against tyranny so like above all else you got to love the shit you're doing first for sure but like i i it hurts to know that like once again and this is the second time we're going to bring this up uh once again i'll be in preach i feel like they're not they're they're a fine role model for us to as- ascribe to the roommates but, are another good tandem yeah and i just feel like damn it 
we we have this chemistry we have this capability we have the technology we have the power to make him better <laughs> and we're not getting better and we're not getting better so i i know it's a slow grind and i've never like me and you have never really cared about the numbers up until now but i think the reason why we're caring about the number now is because the message we're saying yeah it is definitely needs to be heard more than ever well dude maybe maybe we're not clickbaity enough maybe we're not co controversial enough i think the conversations we have are extremely con uh, co controversial but you know maybe there's things we need to look at and change about ourselves to get the algorithm to work for us more um maybe it really is our titles maybe uh we have to work on some some of the phraseology we have and i mean who, who knows I, you know i noticed we we i know we both made a commitment to stop cursing as much because we know that, that <laughs> and by we, we by we <laughs> I mean, it, I mean me. It's really me. <laughs> Eric doesn't curse. It's just me. I I tried to share that blame. I didn't want to take it in on myself. <laughs> but like I've I noticed that. I do notice that. But like, I the thing about it is, it's more realistic now for me because like, if we get to a thousand subscribers, mm -hmm. we I now have I now know that we can hit a four thousand view range. I put out four pod uh eight podcasts a month mm -hmm. that will that that can get us the 4000 views that we need so we have the ability to be monetized but not even be monetized a lot of people like try and get on facebook and youtube to get monetized i don't we're not, i'm not concerned about that i just want to get access to more people cuz once you hit the monetizing range you go into a different category of acknowledgement you okay. get viewed more well maybe and that's what i really want maybe we need to do some of these short format things maybe we actually need to just go find some articles go find some videos and actually do do some a couple of reactions put them out there uh, like I, I, I hear that i don't i don't i don't like that format this is a bit a lot more of a slow grind when people don't know you unless you're really doing clickbaity stuff and, and that's what I don't want it to be. I don't want it to be fake like that. Like, I, I don't think me and you would appreciate that type of growth. Nah, I don't think so either. Because to me, it would feel like we just copy what somebody else did and, and try to just to boost our numbers up to enough for people view this. It's funny because you bring up Abby and Preach. They just now, recently, the last three, four months, started a podcast. Like, they did it differently. They did it the complete opposite way we did. And. You know? But also to also to our credit, me and you aren't regular YouTubers. That's we really work in the health we work in the healthcare field. Like yeah, I've been preach. They <laughs> are legit. But here's the thing, like and 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 Abba even more than preach. Like they have their thing because it's their thing that they've been doing for like five or six years. But you mm -hmm. know, Abba does stand up comedy. Abba has his own YouTube channel. Abba goes and does interviews. But preach. He has a business outside of YouTube, you know, and I think that's kind of yeah. more where we are. We have a, a job that requires some of our attention, and then we have businesses that require uh, even more of our attention, and, you know, we'll end up... Yeah, we just started that real estate business with the family. And you're, like, you're doing that, I'm trading, you're trading, and be looking out for a trading series coming soon. And, and, and it's going to happen. It's, it's like I don't I don't want to make excuses for it, but there's a, there's a part of me that honestly believes we haven't tapped into what our like the for the, for the vast majority of these videos, this has been for people in our direct circle, mm -hmm. and that's why anytime somebody comes to me about oh I want to make a YouTube page, I want to help them because I feel like I don't have a community on YouTube, mm -hmm. like if like if, if that makes sense, I have a I have. 3,000 followers on Facebook, 1,000 on Instagram, a few hundred on Twitter. Like, I have a community there. But they they are these are the people that I meet there and they stay there. Mm. But when you get on YouTube, it's a different beast. Mm -hmm. So if you're active on your YouTube, you always want to collab with somebody. And that's why I've been doing so many Zoom interviews lately. Because the more people I get to see their friend on here, the more chance, the better my chances are. Like it's one of those. It's literally if you make it, I make it. Dude, maybe maybe we've been going at this wrong. Maybe we take our, our long format videos and we just 
take a snippet out less than 10 minutes, maybe less than eight minutes, you know, maybe like five to six minutes, depending on the cut and just put it together and put it out and, and, and put, mm-hmm. put a bit more of a catchy or, or provocative t- uh, title to it. One that won't get us flagged or, or shadow banned or, or, <laughs> or a community strike and just put it up. I mean, it's going to be very difficult because listen, I'm going to, I'm in a woke generation I am not with the woke division, but I will, I will, I will cry wolf in my heartbeat. I will say YouTube is racist and a hot me. <laughs> I will pull the card. I was like, they're discriminating against me because I am African American and I'm I'm speaking my mind. I think it's very, very bad. I I will do it in a heartbeat. Don't test me. YouTube. Recently, recently. So I, you're you're probably not familiar with this, but there's been a. I play a video game called Smash Brothers, the ultimate one. And I have a lot of like uh, on, I follow on the a lot switch? of the per- on the switch. Yeah. So I have I follow a lot of the personalities in that, and um, they just recently went through this whole thing where a lot of them were getting canceled and banned because why of, over a video uh, game? It, well, it's some bad stuff. It, no, it's like bro, like chi- like child pornography oh, no. and can't miss me with that. I have zero. Sympathy. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's well worth it. Like when, when I say they were being banned, they're lucky they're not having charges pressed against them. Yeah. I mean, so, how, hold on, uh, hold on, bro. Hold on. It, <laughs> my bro is not computing my brain. So you're playing super smash brothers, the personalities who basically allow you to watch their, their gameplay on Twitch or YouTube or involved in, and, um, so let me let me set you up with this example because I went to when I was in Toronto I actually went to one of these tournaments to just you know just casually compete I didn't think I was gonna win <clears> anything <throat> major I went out there and played and something became apparent inherently apparent to me immediately when I walked in there are I'm at the time I was thirty years old mm-hmm. and give or take a few years you could say I'm probably you know twenty twenty seven give or take. Mm-hmm. But what I noticed was people that I were playing across from were literally 12 years old because it's a kid's game. Mm. But across from that 12 year old to his right, there's a 27 year old drinking alcohol. And across from him is a female with her parents there. Oh, wow. And so it became a narr- like I was like, who is this tailored to? Furthermore, if you dropped your kid off here and just left them to their devices, who's making sure that these kids aren't being given uh, extracurricular activity influences to persuade them one way or another? And what ended up happening was at the end of these big events, people get invited to hotels, pictures and numbers get to, and it became a problem and it was an invisible problem. And admittedly, as a person who came as a participant, I didn't think logically enough to say to myself that this ha- is an issue. So you can only imagine like what a shock it was to everyone else when it re- when it became clear like, oh, he's 27 years old and he's drinking alcohol and there's a 13 year old or 15 year old in the room with him. Like, okay, he's a personality, but we now, we, we know, we know power corrupts absolute, absolute power corrupts absolutely so that's how that happens sidebar over but like it's hard man i say that to say this i know such a bummer like we were just talking about getting our numbers up (laughs) (laughs) but i say to say this because of that i've now started paying attention to the people i follow yes and i used to say i used to say uh i said i gotta bleep that out god (sighs) just start bleeping it out bro (laughs) I know I have to, but the thing is, when I'm listening to this in real time, I'm going to be like just listening to it subconsciously. Yeah. So now I'm going to have to like, okay, innate, 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 pay attention. But basically, uh, what happened was, I was like, man, I follow this group called Funhouse, and they play video games. They're 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 predominantly white group of people there's no issue with them i have Mm -hmm. no issue with them they've never done anything derogatory they they used to have pretty edgy content back in the day but now they're they're a bunch of middle-aged white people basically playing video games but guess what there's also three black people 
who are middle-aged black people playing video games too. Mm -hmm. Doing the same exact thing, probably not to the same scale because they don't have the budget that they do. But why can't I watch their videos at the same rate that I watch these people's video? Like just, and it's YouTube. Once again, a view is a mode of expression, is a mode of support. So for me, I'm like, I need to start, if I'm going to be sitting here saying, dang, ain't nobody, you know, ain't nobody out here supporting us. I need to start reflecting that a little bit more. Bro, and to your point, what I did that some of the, um, the content creators that I, I, I actually watch and get stuff from them, bro, I joined. Like, um, hmm. I, I support Jimmy Dore. I support, um, even though this dude, he been kind of flying out the rails lately, bro. Quit letting me down, Jimmy. Um, <laughs> and so West one end of the political spectrum. And I also support um, uh, Anthony Brian Logan. Those, those are the guys that I get the majority of my political uh, news from. Um, I do not, like, and I'm, I'm talking about join. I'm hit, I hit the join button for those two. Um, mm -hmm. And then I have, a, you know, a, another person that I follow on Patreon that I, that I found on YouTube that has been banned from YouTube. So I went over to their Patreon and I support them monthly on Patreon. Like, I just started doing it, you know, why is because... Listen, I have to do unto others what I want them to do unto me. You know, like I can't expect people to come and hit the like button, share, subscribe, you know, do a super chat when we go live, like hit the join button whenever we get one. I can't I can't expect that if I'm not willing to do that for somebody else who's really, really it really is a full time job. It really requires way more than I think the the consumers of the YouTube oh, product. It takes a absolutely. lot to sit here to create a rundown, make a script. Look into the camera, stay on point, speak with 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 pace and with with in voice. Like these things take a lot. And if you're actually making the video video like here are not doing like, OK, we have to sync up the audio, sync up the video, make sure our lips and our words match. Then make sure the audio is in a range where you can hear it. T keep the music down. Make sure that we're making eye contact with y'all, that we actually have topics and we're not just on here rambling for an hour and a half like we first did when we first got started it was a pain, it was a pain for people to get through that's why our videos are like 30 minutes max because we don't want yeah. torture bro it's torture no it's it is and like even with uh longer videos i just started cutting them in half i was just like because me you can go like yeah i think me like me but that's because we're close friends though that's why yeah but, but i also think like a lot of people, there are some people who actually will sit back and say, yeah, I want to listen to them talk because uh, that camaraderie, it's, it's like you're a friend. You're a friend yeah. with this. But like when I'm by myself, oh, videos at 20 minutes is cut. But for people like <laughs> well, for me, for sure, you, for sure. I, I'll let it go because I know pe I know people, retention time goes up at that point because you're not what I'm talking about. But I, I actually want to push forward on this a little bit because yeah. I want I to disclose something. I want to ask your honest opinion about something. I had a very dark moment and I'm not sure how to feel about this, bro. Oh, boy. So, <laughs> hey, I, okay. So we all are aware that, uh, Herman Cain died recently due to COVID. I, now, oh boy! Now I'm gonna be very honest here, and I don't. I'm 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 shedding my feelings to you guys. Uh, when I heard that, I chuckled a little bit, and I felt so bad. Like there was a part of me that's died inside because I I'm a healthcare provider. I'm like. Oh my God, hero! Did you just laugh? Did you just chuckle after reading a tweet about a guy who went to a rally, Trump rally, without a mask, and he's seventy plus years old? He has comorbidity issues, and he passed away from COVID. Did you just laugh at that? And I felt so bad. So Eric, I'm gonna come to you now, and I want you to honestly tell me how bad of an individual I am. Eh, I don't. I don't. I don't. Listen. Just, it's, just it's, 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 it, I think it's fine to laugh at stupidity. You get what you get, bro. Like, I'm not going to say that it's, that it's not an ironic thing. You, I don't think you laugh at the fact that you died. I think you laughed more at how ironic his death was. That thing, and I think there's a difference there, you know, and I think you gotta, you know, there's a little bit more of a nuance to, to that kind of a thing. Cause, Oh yeah, you want to get on the Trump train? 
Are you shooting up the hydroxychloroquine? Hydroxychloroquine? Are you taking azithromycin? Are you taking zinc tablets every day? Are you doing? Are you detoxing your liver and taking A, B, C, D, E, and K? Are you doing this on a daily basis? Like Trump's getting getting done? I promise you that old man's on an IV drip every freaking day. He's getting all the minerals and and and, def, and nutrients that he's deficient in on a consistent and daily basis, and that's why he's walking around without a mask. You're not that dude. You're not the president. You've got com- comorbidities, and you're walking around like you're freaking super negro, and man, this is what happened. It's like, you know, I, I will say, God rest his soul. It's sad to see somebody die over something really that's the equivalent of a common cold, but it is what it is, you know. So don't beat yourself up over that. I don't think it's bad to chuckle because he. Listen, I think above. Go ahead. I was like, if the same thing happened to Trump, would you have had the same reaction? I, I yeah. If it happened Definitely. to Biden, would you have had the same reaction? No. Why? Because Biden actually took it serious in the beginning. But like, they, but then neglected to follow through, and then ironically died. Like if, if uh, like if you're saying if they all did the same situation, yeah, same situation, like if, exact same okay, same situation. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, then yeah. It doesn't matter who it is. I I was I'm literally uh, pay, uh like chastising my sister <laughs> in real time on her post. On, on Facebook, on Instagram. I'm doing it now on the identity booth. Like, <laughs> like put on, like, she's in, she's going to these events wearing a mask and she's hanging around people without wearing masks. And it's just like, you, remember, guys, the mask doesn't protect you. It's it for protects everybody other else. people. So when you're sitting next to someone who doesn't have a mask on, thinking that you're cool, you're not. You no. are not okay. Yeah. So, like, and she's just like, I know, I know, I know. It's like, no, you don't know. If you didn't know, you'd have your mask on. Listen, the and thing is. If you did know, you wouldn't even put yourself in that situation. I've seen too many people just out and about. And I'm like, if if you came down with COVID because you wanted to eat sushi. Man, and I not really want to eat sushi. And I do. Trust me. I'm in the house where blue sushi was originated. Omaha, Nebraska, and I can't even enjoy Man, the, bro, you gotta the go do birth it. play. You got to go uh, first thing when they're open, so no one's, literally no one's in there. By the time you get your rolls and you eat, you're out of that place. Yeah, bro, I, 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 it's not even about me getting infected. I think I would do more harm to the society. I, I, there's a part of me that feels like I am a, a asymptomatic carrier and a super one at that. Hey man, you blame it on genetics. It is what it is. The thing is, I still understand probably more than you and I both know more than most that there are precautions that need to be taken. I just went to Mexico. Mm-hmm. We didn't we weren't required to wear masks there. So I didn't. I was outside most of the time. If I wasn't outside, I was in my room. I was not lingering around. I wasn't hanging around a whole bunch of people. All the staff there were required to wear masks and gloves. Like, great. Everything. I mean, literally everything. But we went to the gym. I got off a machine. The lady comes around right behind me with sanitized water and fresh towel and literally wipes the entire machine down. I use a, a barbell to do squats and curls. She literally is right behind me. Nope, don't don't use these wipes. I'm going to clean it. You know, she's coming behind with, I guess, some antiviral spray and, and cleaning this down. And I was like, the lengths that even these people are going to to ensure that I have a safe uh, trip. I know the dishes were sanitized. Everything was clean. Before you sit down, they literally are taking sanitized water, wiping the booths, wiping the chairs, wiping the tables down. I was like, craziness. I was like, that's not even happening in America. This is Mexico. And this is freaking Mexico, bro. It's it's amazing to see what money will do, baby. Yeah, yeah. Well, when it's all inclusive like- and their check is guaranteed, like, I mean, hey, might as well. But you know, I mean, I, I mean, and this is, and this goes without saying. Like, I, I didn't do it on the podcast, but I definitely, I definitely came for Eric before. I think I, it was, it was like part of the cold opening of yeah. like you going to Mexico that I made. I was like, oh, I don't agree with this, and I said that my mom was gonna call you. <laughs> but like, so don't think like I'm, I'm showing bias here. It's just like, it's there's just too much. I, I don't know. Like at this point, I'm probably rambling. rambling. I, what I got? 39, 40 minutes on the dot. Yep. Uh, so I mean, 
What else we got to catch up on? I mean, I think for now, I think this is good. I honestly think that you guys should be anticipating to see some some upgrades and some changes from us in the immediate future. Uh, everything we're doing, we're we're doing with you guys in mind. We know you're the ones who have to sit sit and deal with us for however long of a video we decide to record. <laughs> and you've been rocking with us for two years, and so we're gonna take that next step for you guys, bring you some better content, making sure it's more organized. We're gonna have some probably short format videos for you to have during the week just to kind of see the, the things we're thinking about, talking about stuff that's going on in the world. Hopefully something that identifies with you in some way. That's the reason why it's called the identity group. We want to make sure that you can identify with where we're coming from and we can learn. If you subscribe and, and like and go into the chat and leave a comment, then we can identify with you back. That's what we want to do. Like we don't, we're, we don't know everything. We don't have all the right perspectives. We don't purport to know everything or think we're absolutely right. So we want to know what you think because the more people interact, like you are and I interact, like we're on opposite ends of the spectrum. And if we can meet in the middle on dang near every topic, then we want you to understand. And we're grown men who don't have a have a problem punching each other in the face. So if you can come in the chat. And you can put something in perspective. The thing about Hero and I is we will concede the point. Go back and watch our videos. If we if we see that we're wrong, we'll immediately concede the point. And we'll meet in the middle. And that's if we can get the majority of our generation and generations after us to do that, how much more powerful will we be around times like November 3rd? around times for the, the Senate and congressional elections. We can literally punch government in the mouth, <laughs> you feel me? Like, that's what we're supposed to do. So it's not about you being left, you being right, you believe in this and you're not believing this, so you're a hurt, you, you hate me and you're a hurtful person and everything you say is wrong. Nah, we don't believe that. We can meet in the middle, we can find common ground and move forward. But anyway, Enough rambling. We appreciate the, the 180 some odd people who have been with us thus far and the next 180,000 people that will be with us in the, in the near future. So, yeah. You heard it best from the, the man, the myth, the legend, the boy wonder. E Dub, I appreciate you being here. But sure. where can they find us? Hey man, at this point, I mean, you can find us everywhere. So, the main place you need to be looking for us is on the YouTubes. Hit that bell. Hit the thumbs up. Oh, shoot. Hit the hit the hit subscribe. Hit, hit the thumbs down. I say, hey, listen, all 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 interactions are good interactions. <laughs> I tell people all the time, hey, if you don't like the video, you just you came for the view, but if you don't like the video, prove it. Dislike it. <laughs> yeah, put the thumbs down. And then go in the comment section and tell me why you don't like it. So may, hey, maybe unless I said I got the wrong perspective, but besides that, you find us on iTunes because I always forget iPhone. I'm not an iPhone. <laughs> I, I am a green bubble text message. Y'all forgive me, Mia Copa. Anyway, you can find us on Spotify. You can find yep. us on uh, YouTube Music, which was formerly Google Play, SoundCloud, yep. Last FM. Man, we out yep. here. We even on Reddit, bro. We out here. We on Reddit. We got everything. And once again, Eric said it best, so I'm not even going to talk on this. You guys take care of yourself. It's been a blast. Uh, Go check out those other interviews I've done with the teachers and the coaches. It's some very insightful stuff. I appreciate them once again for coming out and being on my podcast. So, uh, you guys take care. Eric, love you, man.